Vienna, metropolis of the fine arts. The focus of Europe's culture, the hub of its musical life, and in bygone days, the resplendent residence of the Habsburg emperors. Vienna, a city that sounds like music. Among the splendid array of its historical architecture, Vienna harbors a living treasure, a Baroque masterpiece. The Spanish Riding School in the Imperial Palace, housed in what must be the world's most beautiful riding manege. One of Vienna's emblems, the white stallions, the Lipizzanas, a centaur-like fusion of rider and horse in a consummate moving work of art. The history of Vienna's buildings transports the visitor back to bygone days, the Baroque age. The age of the empire, when the performances of the Spanish riding school were the prerogative of the imperial household and the nobility, and the white stallions were known as the imperial whites. These horses' line of descent goes far, far back, right to the primeval ancestors of the Arabs. Their beauty was famed throughout the Arabian lands and beyond. The conquerors of Spain brought their horses with them. There, the Moorish horses were crossbred with the ancient race of Spanish steeds to give birth to the Iberian horse, the Andalusian. They were extolled as the cleverest, sturdiest, and noblest of spirit, and in the manege, the quickest to learn. These qualities made them renowned all over Europe. It was with Andalusians that Emperor Charles II of Inner Austria established his court stud farm in May 1580. He had nine stallions and 24 breeding mares of the Hispanic race brought here to the small village of Lipica in the cast landscape near Trieste. Stallions from Italy, Denmark, Bohemia and Egypt joined them later. In those days, the Lipizzanas came in many colors. Not all of them were white, as we can see on this painting from the year 1727. The horses continued to be named after the village of Lipica, although Piba, in the province of Styria, has housed the Austrian Lipizzaner stud farm since 1920. Piba provides the stallions for the Spanish riding school in Vienna. It's here, too, that they are born. Lipizzana foals are born dark colored. Their coats don't turn completely white until they're between five and eight. They're born, as it were, with a silver spoon in their mouths. These foals have a more convoluted ancestral tree than many human aristocrats. They always take their first names from one of the six ancestral stallions, Pluto, Condassano, Maestoso, Neapolitano, Favori, Siglavi. Their last name derives from the mother's line. The secret of their breeding lies in the meticulous selection. Only the finest horses are used for breeding purposes. At their mother's side, they learn the rules of life in the herd. But in time, they grow more independent and start to explore the world.
One year later, we meet the young horses on the mountainsides again. They spend three summers here, just beneath the timber line, close to heaven, stealing their muscles and widening their lungs as they gallop over the slopes. Life in the herd has its own rules, though. Nature ordains a hierarchy, and each horse must fight for a place in it. Only the finest horse will lead the herd. At this stage, the wrangling is still more play than deadly earnest. But we'll encounter these movements again later, more pronounced, cultivated by their riders at the Spanish Riding School in Vienna. Only six of the young stallions in this herd will be sent to the Spanish riding school in Vienna in the autumn as three-year-olds. The stables in Vienna are the new home of the finest and most talented Lipizzana stallions of their year. Now they'll embark on their studies at this equestrian academy. Their teachers-to-be inspire the horse's trust from the first meeting. painting by Julius von Blas comes alive, the morning workout session, as it's taken place for centuries now. This is the secret of the riding school's unparalleled excellence, tireless, patient work. Tradition is the root of all of this. Tradition is here too. Whenever a rider enters the hall, he salutes the painting of the man who had it built, Charles VI. Some of the lessons of the Autecole go back to military exercises. To clear a path in the turmoil of battle, a rider could perform one of the train jumps, like the levade, capriole, or pirouette. The Lavade has become the hallmark of the Spanish riding school, a superb feat of strength and poise and perfect equilibrium. The principle behind classical dressage is only to cultivate those movements which the horse is born to perform. The most important educational techniques are calm, patience and reward. It takes between six and eight years before a young horse is fully trained. One of the basics of the autecole is learning the piaf. The assistant's crop acts like the conductor's baton. Perfection. Here you see the piaf and the piaf pirouette. A rider proves his mastery by training a young stallion from the beginning up to the autocorn. This is a never-ending learning process. With horses, there's something new to learn every day. Even the master riders go on teaching each other, another aspect of tradition. They learn with and from one another.
Today is a big day in one of these young stallions' lives. He'll carry a rider on his back for the first time. For the last few months, he's been growing accustomed to the saddle. Now, though, is the moment of truth. It's done very carefully and very calmly. A lightweight apprentice is the first to mount. The horse shouldn't even think of resisting. Patience and trust are an infallible formula. The young stallion learns from an experienced rider. The young rider learns from an experienced trained stallion. <laughs> 